It's brilliant. I went back there in 2020, raved about it to my wife, and she's like, it's just cooking stuff on the stone. But then she came out a convert, so oh, okay. who is right for marrying me? <laughs> <laughs> you me. wanted a stone, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome along to the community notice board. I got Drew to do it, and he's oh, okay. already crumbled under the All right. pressure. All right, start again. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Community Notice Board, a podcast about suburbs we grew up in, local landmarks, hometown heroes, and other shit. Coming of age tales. <laughs> oh, Little oh, pause after right. everyone. I noticed as well. You Don't think worry. you could? I you think remember. you could take shots at the king? But <laughs> then when you're in the position, <laughs> we are you crumble. The, the king has dyslexia, and so we, do the paupers. <laughs> All the subjects. All the subjects. <laughs> we have oh. a very special guest. We got. We're doing something a little different. We've got uh, comedian, uh, podcaster, <laughs> talented shadow striker. Jamie Kirk. Jamie Kirk. Good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I Let's love it. Through. A very special guest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and normally that always rings pretty, you know, we, every week it's a special guest. This week is... Uh, the co this week is, is a, that this week is a guest. We've had somebody drop out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so, but no, we actually have a great app today because we're excited. This is going to be a yeah. bit of a deep dive into uh, a backstory. And we talked a little bit about this think in the first step you but did, yeah, we're but going to dive into jamie's favorite i guess the favorite place that you grew up right i mm, mean in terms of all absolutely. the all the places this is jamie's dreamland uh so we, we're sort of being a bit vague it's sort of vasana slash the hay can't believe that you can pronounce vasana perfectly but when it's like you know like pembroke in australia you're like, what's this pembroke eh? <laughs> taramu <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. So, and the Hague is pretty Which, easy. But, yeah. And Varsana is a suburb of the Hague, right? Well, Varsana is a suburb of that like municipality, I believe, because the Hague is technically a city. All right, it's where me. the United Nations. Yeah, so the like I think in Europe there's no such that the cities don't end, right? It just continues to be little suburbs until you hit another city. It's not like like Australia where it's like oh, there's a city and then there's the outback. Yeah, I guess there's like, some like. Uh, you know, windmills and shit. But like, <laughs> <laughs> Drew has done his research. Oh, no. Hey, I got a train. <laughs> I, I mean, there train. is actually there was a windmill like two streets away from me. Yeah, right. that's, that's yeah, totally. totally. I got so, a train yeah. from Amsterdam to Den Haag and saw plenty of fucking canals. I believe the Vassenal would technically be classified as like a town or a suburb. Right. right. Okay. okay. But it's uh, the big city nearby is 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 yeah. Hague. Well, Den it's Haag. actually Vassenal's got a th- the special. One of many special things about it, it's a very special place is that it's equidistance between The Hague and Amsterdam. So it takes like half an hour to get to both driving from. Oh, right. Right, oh, okay. man. It's that close to Amsterdam. God that's damn. crazy. So. Yeah, that's where my dad used to work, baby. Yeah, The Hague. Uh, I love that because it always blew. I didn't understand The Hague. It's a, such a weird name for a European city, but it's. The Hedge, right? Yeah. So I love it because it's. Um, I mean, Den it's, Haag. In, in De- it's Den Haag, all that bullshit in, uh, in Dutch. But they call it the Hague, and they have. I think in France they call it whatever the hedge is in French. It just you call it whatever you want. Mm. Right. Um, but I love it because it was originally back in the 1500s or whatever. It was um, it was called Gravenhag, which is the Count's Hedge. So it was the Count's Hedge, the Count's uh, farm, sort of hunting ground. So it was called Gravenhag, and then all the locals are just like they're just like, oh, let's go down to the Hague. You know, like they're yeah, just like yeah, Aussies, yeah. like let's. Fuck off the Graven part. <laughs> Let's hit the Hog for the night. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go to Hog Vegas for and the Count trying to like hold onto it. Yeah. You know? Did you mean Graven? <laughs> it's my Hog. Fuck off, Count. <laughs> so the Hog. It's my Hog. <laughs> <laughs> Not my Hog. <laughs> you could suck my Hog, dude. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so James, when were you there? I don't think we covered. This I was bit. there from probably. I think it was nineteen ninety. Three to 1999. Mm. I'm excited to tell you all the tales of growing up, which is me just individually listing various things I ate in all <laughs> and what they consist of. Where you're just like, so tell us a fun story. And I'm like, it's called a frickandel. It's like a skinless sausage. It's deep fried. <laughs> well, all right. you, always, all right. you always say uh, that it's like your most favorite place growing up and you felt really at home there. But it's like you lived down the road from an amusement park in the richest part of the Netherlands. Yeah, I, I feel didn't, like most people would be like, "That was a pretty sweet time." It's you know? funny because, like, I didn't obviously as a 
seven year old, you don't realize that it's the richest part. You didn't check your privilege. I <laughs> didn't check my privilege. No, I I saw color. Uh, <laughs> no, I, it's like because it's also um I think it's a place. That, I think the statistic is it's like ten percent expats, which is like an inordinately large amount of hmm. like people settling from other countries. So like Vasana is very like expat heavy. So, hmm. so it's like your stones fro- throw from running into some cunt with an American accent at yeah. all times. Like hmm. so much so that it's got like so much so you, you want to hit the, hit them with the stone that you're throwing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's got one of the like bigger like American like import shops that you can get in that area just because so many Americans are like, where are the pop tarts, you know, like that sort of stuff. But like, you don't realize because it, I guess it would kind of be like any like ultra elite rich person suburb in that, like the truly rich people live in these like fuck off, like protected places. Like Mm -hmm. we just, we lived in a nice house growing up. It was like, well, it has, it's has a parallel with fucking Gangnam, the suburb in South Korea in that they've both had, satirical songs written so there's Gangnam Style obviously and then there's one in the 90s just called Vasana by this like weird duo like this rap duo a right. Dutch rap duo mm, yeah Did it have, do you have any of the lyrics or anything you, you'd think I would have Drew's like I gotta save my data I can't <laughs> click that one I'll get back to the rich person <laughs> stuff in a minute but like I remember uh there was, I thought this was Adam Sandler because you know how Adam Sandler did like parody songs and stuff mm-hmm. after he like left SNL and he's got those great albums that are so funny mm. still. And like, I thought until maybe like two years ago that Adam Sandler wrote this parody song called Fuck the Macarena, which was like huge in Holland. It's like a full Berenstain Bears effect thing where I was just like, yep, Adam Sandler wrote a parody song called Fuck the Macarena. The same way you think like Weird Al writes every parody song yeah, download yeah, yeah, off yeah, LimeWire. Yeah, 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 yeah. And because I remember like our school bus driver like was replaced for like a week by a real like Otto from the Simpsons <laughs> bus driver who was just like, hey, how's it going? Like putting I in- you were like, going to say it was Chris Farley. Yeah, it was Chris <laughs> Farley. And lunches. he was putting in CDs where like people are, did like rude language because like the buses to our- school in holland weren't like um the regular buses that you share with other schools it was like privatized like mini coaches or big coaches depending on how many people you were picking up right. so like everyone yeah. right. stretch limo to school <laughs> yeah. and james like i didn't realize we were that rich i'm just in the sometimes fucking, lo- fucking yeah, murder sometimes when i was feeling peckish after school i just went down to the mcdonald's in my basement <laughs> uh, no but there's but like they were full, but it was all people from your school, so you never had to be like, oh, I'm. Get-. But you would never be like, oh, I'm going to have to stand on the bus because I'm the last stop, and I'm going to be surrounded by people who throw stuff at me and be mean to me. Yeah, this happened to all of you guys, I assume. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, just but me we, then. Um, no. <laughs> what are you? So you're standing on the? No, the- no, like stand like in Australia on a school bus, we had to like stand up and stuff. Like oh you right, no, bus. my nan drove in a school. Oh yeah, no, we had our own school buses in Newcastle, and it was like only my school would get on. But it was like once you're on, it was. Lord of the Flies. Yeah, like, yeah, There was yeah. a lot of, like, <laughs> turmoil in the sea. But, yeah, but I, I th- so this bus driver used to play this song called Fuck the Macarena. <laughs> and, like, I remembered it being this Adam Sandler song for so many years. And the one lyric that stuck with me was, like, it's the first one. Because, obviously, the original, they sing in Spanish, right? It's like, but in this one, he's like, oh, all the girls. Mean, obviously, the original, they sing in Spanish. Well, because it's by oh, Los Del Rio. Like, it's a Spanish song, Macarena. Ma- oh, I thought yeah. you meant the Adam Sandler version. No, 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 no. <laughs> obviously, he recorded it in Spanish. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so it, yes, the, yeah, the, the line thing. is like uh, All the girls they call me macaroni All the girls say my dick's so bony And like when you're like Sick. seven And a bus driver's playing that You're like this is fucking genius oh, Like yeah. I want to be a comic when I grow up <laughs> I'm know? going to school tomorrow But like it's school. not him It's not Adam Sandler Like I looked for it when we started this podcast Because I was like oh I'll look up the Adam Sandler song So I got it for a story It's some like Dutch yeah. happy hardcore song That like does that But then it's like it does like fuck the macarena and then does like full club Dutch like. <laughs> so you were f- fooled by the title of an MP3 because it said Adam Sandler, even though it was in probably COD English, and it was like it didn't even <laughs> say Adam Sandler. I think the bus driver told us it was Adam Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> so we was like, yeah, sick. This guy rules. Oh man, that's fucked. But yeah, it was a it was an affluent place, but like where we like our street was kind of just like rows of townhouses that were nice but like not like insane but Mm. you could go further in and that like because one of our neighbors um did quite well for himself while we were living and moved out into a bigger house we visited his new house and he was just like yep 
there's a bowling alley, like there's the indoor oh, pool, like uh, heated at all times, and you're just like motherfucker, like you just didn't, oh, just didn't know. Yeah, that's because uh, I saw that there's a lot of like I think the royal family and shit live around there. Right? Yeah. A lot of a lot I, of celebs. I, got some stuff I think about the royal family. Oh, there you are. All right. okay. A lot of celebs live there. I mean, I think I mentioned this on the. A bowling alley, by the way, in your house, that is either total trash or, like, the richest thing. Like, you're either living above a bowling alley. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you yeah, want to yeah, check yeah. out the bowling alley? Yeah, there's a weird thing with Dutch bowling, too, that I don't think I've ever seen at any other, like, bowling alley since. Uh, swap your shoes out for clogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but it's, like, it because obviously there are real bowling alleys there, and you're like, oh, bowling. And then there's one, I remember someone being like, let's go bowling. It's a bowling party. And, like, we took us there, and the lanes are, like, the same size, but all the pins are attached to string, and the ball you can hold in your hand. Like, it's a light shot put, oh. and you just kind of have to throw it down there and try and knock them off the strings, which becomes a lot harder because the strings hold them up. And apparently that's, like, just a thing. Like, so you'd have to clarify which bowling you're going so to. So they I call think. them both bowling. Mm-hmm. Man, that's confusing. And so, hold on, the strings, like, do, does someone back? Stage like with a marionette puppet, like pulling the pins up. Like no, that. it's all like uh, automated, like right. the same way the bowling is. It's just they're attached to strings. It's weird. That's so weird. Yeah. What kind of uh, bowling alley did the guy have at his house? Uh, regular, I believe. <laughs> yeah. uh, you've out. got two options: string, weird <laughs> yeah. shot put style, or regular. <laughs> I'm gonna go with regular. I um, yeah, I found. Oh, so you you had something in the royal family? Uh, I do. Yeah, I was gonna just point out. Um, to everybody's shock and amazement that the current queen of the Netherlands lives there, but you fucking cut my grass on that <laughs> one. Um, and this chick, I don't know, because it's like everyone knows Queen Beatrice was like the previous queen. I think she was like the most famous of Yeah, she was on royalty. a couple of episodes ago. And, um, queen B. <laughs> oh, right. <yeah. laughs> but this new queen, Queen Maxima, I think she's since 2013. Oh, that's an upgrade. And she's uh, yeah. <laughs> like a Honda or yeah. something. That <laughs> sounds like a Japanese <laughs> RPG <laughs> villain. <laughs> Four door queen, uh, she's a fucking hot. She's a smoke show, by the way. <laughs> is she really? How yeah. old? Oh is my she? lord, she'd be like, I'd guess like early forties. Oh, hold on, she's the marriage. So she's, she's the married to regent. The she's the Prince Philip of the yes. king. Yes. 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 yes, but her title is queen. Yeah, apparently Queen Maxima, and um, she basically she like kind of she worked in marketing and met the king just like in Spain. She was on holiday at uh, the Seville um, Spring Fair, and apparently like he just introduced himself as Alexander. And, she, and they hit it off and then like a, a bit later he reveals he's the print like the, the prince at the time and she's like she doesn't oh, like, believe him two weeks later they meet up in new york it's it's rom-com shit like yeah it's that, like the that fucking happened to, the um, prince and me uh princess here the the danish uh, yeah, prince mary yeah. she, she was i think she was like a marketing chick and he was over here for the olympics and Prince, I think Frederick or whatever, he wasn't the king at the time. He was just a prince. I don't even know if he's king now, but he was the first, he was the next in line, and, and they just ran into each other at a bar. And she's this like suave Danish guy's like, oh, you know, I'm the prince of Denmark, and she's like, yeah, right, yeah, you know, it's whatever. crazy. And like, it fucking was just I can't a random chick. That's happened twice. Like that that's, seems like it should. Yeah, uh, one, I don't, like I'd like to see this order of that because that's one of them's copying the other one you know like, <laughs> the, it's like this danish guy's like uh, we're over here resorting to things like nagging which, <laughs> which we did so much <laughs> um so yeah two weeks later they meet again in new york they hit it off um he uh, he proposes to her on ice skates which I, I liked because he's a talented speed skater and apparently that's huge. In, yeah, uh, in the yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. He doesn't need to impress it. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, dude, you can just pull the fucking dude. ring out in the drive yeah. through of a Mac. I feel like you've <laughs> exactly. done all right. You can, and she's man, not turning you down. You can, you can wear Dunlop volleys <laughs> yeah. if you want. You don't have to bust out the speed skates. Um, and they get married, right? But her parents don't attend the wedding. Um, for oh, a pretty for a man. pretty interesting reason. This gone, is dead, this bowling. is a Drew Speck script. <laughs> I feel like you've just gone <laughs> off the rails right now. Hey, this, Mary, for, for Mar- an interesting reason, a handsome man you need Drew. <laughs> <Benesley interesting. laughs> His penis drags behind him because it's four meters long. <laughs> Drew speed skates up and skates ice in their face. Like, hey loser, what are you doing with this guy? I'm the real fucking king of this. Gets ice his dick ring. out and the ice breaks. <laughs> um, so this this uh, woman's original from Argentina mm. and turns out that her father Nazi close served <laughs> as a <laughs> man you don't even want to be close right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. served as a um, 
cabinet minister during what's called the national reorganization process, which was the dictatorship from 1976 to 1983. The junta, right? So he was. Yeah. So yeah, it yeah, is actually close. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. And basically, so during that time, that stretch of I think seven years, an estimated ten thousand to thirty thousand people were either murdered or disappeared, and this guy was in the government. Uh, so then, that, like the Dutch, they had this like Latin American expert, some academic, held an inquiry, which concluded that he, while he probably wasn't directly involved, he almost certainly knew, <laughs> like knew about it. Of course, which is like you're in the government, you get yeah, that yeah, memo yeah. every now and then, like this kind. No one of this kind of turned up the wedding. It said the address was at the Hague. And he's yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I'm turning up to that one. They don't really like me. <laughs> right? oh, I've got something on. Yeah, I think if I didn't turn up for the free car I won there last month, <laughs> I'm come to this wedding. He's eventually not invited. And, uh, and the mum <laughs> just basically stands by a man and says, well, if he's not going, I'm not going. And, uh, and yeah, that's them. And now she fucking lives in Varsana. Fuck. Your, your wow. name. I could probably Varsana. see her out getting groceries and stuff. God oh, damn. totally, yeah. But, like, fucking, you know, like, I've heard of some nightmare in-laws before. <laughs> like, everyone's got a Listen, war crime in the closet. Uh, I want to tell you my dad. He's an <laughs> Argentinian war criminal. Yeah. I once dated a girl whose dad was a... Uh, in the like a bikey gang and i was terrified <laughs> of this guy oh, you know he didn't disappear ten thousand fucking people Never yeah rules. national reorganization campaign <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sounds, sounds a little bit <laughs> yeah there's no real way to you know uh, gussy that name up um should we do this fucking shot by the way yeah yeah let's oh, do it yeah so we're just do we want to say do we want to put the long lead on it no, and try and make it work no i mean yeah. it's basically uh me and my girlfriend made this kumquat liqueur from our kumquat do you tree. just smash it or do you yeah it? I think it's just a fucking. I'm it's just sipping. a bit of European. Ooh, that's nice. Is Ooh, right, right? Mm. citrusy. Ooh, good. Yeah, that's I really like good. it. That's nice, eh? Mm. Oh, that's fucking. Yeah, that's heartburn in a glass for me. That is a beauty. Gonna <laughs> 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 be frothing at the mouth. <laughs> just like, <laughs> five minutes in, just mainline and next thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Drew's like, at least I got out my Queen story. Oh, well, <laughs> fucking yeah, <laughs> chopping up and snorting my lanta. I um. I yeah, so I was looking into the Hague because the Hague is just like so. It's almost like a punch. I knew about the Hague as like the punchline of where you criminal cr- war criminals yeah, yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But it's um, it's got all sorts of criminal tribunals. I think it was. I tried to find the real backstory. It just seemed like one of those things that the, that uh, it was the royal. It was sort of like the capital of the Netherlands. From a, it was like the Canberra, not the big city, but the you know where a lot of the embassies and stuff were. Yep. And then it was like we're going to have this. Uh, criminal tribunal at some point and oh, well, let's do it at, at the Hague and then that just sort of oh well we did it that at the Hague let's just you know. so there's all these international courts of justice and, and I've, criminal um, courts I've been there by the way to the Hague so what did you do mate? <laughs> <laughs> you were dragged there <laughs> doing driving <laughs> charges <laughs> just going all the way to the top <laughs> putting my appeal into the ICC for the yeah. fucking cop that pulled me over I'm representing myself <laughs> <laughs> at the Hague yeah. well um, I went there and like it was just when I was on exchange because I did exchange in uh, Maastricht in in the Netherlands for about a month, and it was like uh, kind of it was basically like a law course, and so we all had to go there. And the during it, we like sat in while one of the fucking Serbian war criminals from the Bosnian War was like right fucking there, and I couldn't remember which one it was. I thought it was that Radic dude. Oh. Then I looked it up, and I don't think the timelines, sw- but it was whoever was getting tried around two thousand eleven. Well, so. The international, so there's the International Court of Justice and the international, then there's the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. Like they set up their own court mm. for that. They had 160 people on trial. Fuck. It started in 1993 and it only finished in 2017. Shit. 160 guys wow. got dragged in front. And um, did you see, that one guy killed himself. Yeah, there. so that's, that's what I was going to say. So there's like, uh, there's... You know, Slobodan Milosevic was the big name. He actually died before his trial, so he was never charged, like never found guilty. And actually sort of was broadly exonerated after. Everyone sort of paints him as the bad guy, but he was like a bad guy. But the actual bad, bad dudes were um, like Mladic and stuff. People actually pulling the fucking... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was Serbian. That That was one one of my dad's big bits when I was growing up. He'd always be like, you know, I didn't want to call you Andrew we had big fights with your mama I, I wanted to call you Slobodan but she, uh, <laughs> she put the foot down <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, every generation a, a comedian a is born. Bit. Yeah. Um, but the bit the, 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 he was actually a Croat the Bosnian Croat not a Serb uh, Slobodan um, Proljak he uh, this is only a f- couple of, this is like so it dissolved in December 2017 this was in November 
2017. And it just resolved because they ran out of people. So he was just literally one of the last people that they dragged in front of the court. And they got sentenced to war crimes. I think he got 20 years in jail. And during the pronouncement, he basically said, he addressed the judges, said, Judges, Slobodan Preljak is not a war criminal with disdain. I reject your verdict. And then just, just shot at a fucking bunch of poison. That's crazy. And just dropped dead effectively right there and then. That it's, it's, is a cool way to go out, it's, though. Man, it's I mean, he waited until literally the sentencing. Like, like, you are exclamation pointing your life. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It I is. remember when it happened because, like, there was the video and stuff and it's crazy to watch, but I, I haven't like, looked so at... So you think I'll get out of this? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't looked like, into it They're like, no, you're next. Did, do they know how he smuggled the poison in? No, I, I, didn't, I didn't get to that, but, I mean, it, it's like a, you know... It's not like a gun where it's like you could easily just have that in your fucking yeah. sock yeah, or something. Yeah, no yeah. metal detectors or whatever. But um, I don't know if he had help or not. But it's in, you know, the Netherlands. So I, I assume that he just did it. And, yeah, I mean, imagine if he was like, they're like, not guilty. And he's like, I reject it. Hold on. What was that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <so> not guilty. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so that that was crazy. That was um, – but I had another thing from uh, this. This, uh, this is one of my favorite things. Um, another court that they put they put together is the Iran United States Claims Tribunal. So when the Iran hostage crisis happened, USA and the Iran governments just cut off all ties. They're like, we can't communicate anymore. You know, we're not having diplomats. There's no embassies. We're, we're fucked. So then they people mediated and said, all right, we're going to have some sort of like tribunal where. Uh, every claim made by a company, let's say a company is McDonald's or whatever, like we've got all this land in Iran. The Iranian government even pay us for it or whatever. And so they'd have these cases. And it went for a long time. But uh, th- there was comprised of three American judges, three Iranians, and three neutral judges. When it started, two were from Sweden, one was from the Netherlands. And so they would go through all these cases. But then at one point, uh, the Iranians got real mad about the Swedish judge because they thought he was uh, biased. <laughs> so during one of... This is, this is a fucking international court, one of the biggest courts in the... It's the only way Iran and the US are... Uh, debating with yeah. each other a, a huge thing uh, during one of the sittings when judge nils mangard of sweden walked in judges kashani and judges shafai of iran sprung from their seats grabbed him by the collar twisted his arm behind his back and began pounding on him <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my literally God. put him in a hammerlock and started bashing him wwe the style. other judges the other judges oh, dude, the two so iranian funny. judges uh, grabbed him and beat the shit out. I mean, they didn't cause any math. They just literally yeah. like pummeled him <laughs> like a fucking cartoon, and they had to pull him pull him oh, off. And then they rules. just the, the pr- presiding judge or someone was like, "All right, we're going to shut down court for the day." And then uh, an awkward break room at lunchtime. Yeah. <laughs> so Lagerin says uh, one of the guys says that it came after months of pent up frustration among the Iranians. And uh, two days later, Kashani, one of the Iranian judges, threatened to kill Mangard, said, if Mangard ever dares to enter the tribunal chamber again, either his corpse or my corpse will leave it rolling down the stairs. Fuck <laughs> yes. Fuck, dude. <laughs> Which is so badass. And then basically they didn't know what to do because there was no international law on how to deal with an assault by effectively two people with... Uh, you know, uh, diplomatic immunity. So they just, nothing happened. They just went, oh, we can't arrest him. You can't, there's yeah. no cops to have no jurisdiction here. Yeah. So no one knew what to do for weeks. Man, and they, they had to basically they, mediate on how to get these two judges to leave and to, to yeah. resolve it. They just like hand nils like the business card of a boxing trainer. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Gotta yeah. Learn a fight man, you got to get your fucking, yeah, your ground <laughs> you defense know, happening. You got to work that turn out like the speed bag, just man. Watch some fucking Rogan clips or something. Um, I got I got two reviews of the ICC, the International Criminal Court, and they were <laughs> not <laughs> guilty by, by two Iranian guys. Yeah. Like, yeah. There were one of them, I think, is Iranian. If my knowledge of their weird script is <laughs> in any way accurate, no way. weird <laughs> script. Well, I can't read the guy's name because it's in. Arabic or or Persian, I can't. You know, I'm not a fucking linguist. Uh, but this is there's plenty of like reviews which are all there's a lot of like hate towards one particular judge, which I suspect is very racist because she's like I think the one Gambian judge on the fucking wow. you know the whole organization. But these two just popped up because a lot of them are quite detailed and people obviously like this is bias and blah blah blah. And you, this is a lot of like this is anti-Semitic or this is anti-Iranian, this is anti-American. And then, so Jordan's the first guy, uh, one star. I ordered a burger, but they gave me a side of hypocrisy. <laughs> hey, 
<laughs> is that Jordan the country? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, foreign, foreign minister is like well, love someone it. turning a bad Lunig cartoon. Into <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, one side of a bog. Uh, and then, and then four months prior to that, this other bloke, one star. I ordered fries, but they came with extra hypocrisy. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Fuck. That <laughs> is so good. Get a man, new fucking who is, shtick. Who is like, who is like, you know, I got a bad judgment of the International Court of Justice. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going <laughs> to get a back. one star. <laughs> and I'm going to make it seem like it's a fast food restaurant. <laughs> yeah. too. I'm not going to like do a scathing thing about human rights. I'm just going to be like, ah, oh, I went to McDonald's and they forgot my hypocrisy. <laughs> what are the 12 my, uh, hypocrisy? My uncle used to work as a diplomat in The Hague. Uh, I'm not sure if he still does. Uh, he rules though. He's yeah. my dad's younger brother, mm. and he hell of a left hook on the guy. <laughs> <laughs> no hold, Iranian judge is a mess of him. His order at McDonald's: hold the hypocrisy. <laughs> 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 he rules. He's just like he's a loose unit. But his wife is this Siberian woman called Ilsa, and she can like out drink absolutely anyone I know in like a team even Sick. probably. Oh. And so I went to visit them when I was 19, when they were living in Den Haag and uh, I stayed at their place and like, you know, the, your two interests pull you away because like I had a cousin who's a bit younger than me, like a couple of years. And he's like maybe 17, 16. He's like, want to play Wii with me? And then like my auntie else is like, want to drink vodka? And I'm just like, Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> What did uh, you do? I I drank the vodka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because she was also like, at that point, you know, you're 19, you've been hiding smoking cigarettes from your parents for like two years. They're just doing it at the dining room table after dinner and I'm just like slowly pulling it out, being like, and they're like, yeah, just get it out, man, you know. <laughs> and so I just like smoke with her and she's just like, so at dinner, like, a dinner, a family dinner that takes like half an hour. Like this, because this is a weeknight dinner for them because like, you know, mm. the kids have got school in the morning, they've got to work. But I, I think Tim taking the day off to like take me around and stuff. But it is for all intents and purposes a weeknight dinner, like, you know, 40 minutes. She's fed me six beers. She has probably had a bad yeah. six beers. Yeah, yeah. Like just <laughs> on, nursing on you like lap. a baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Drink up, young Jay. And essentially, like, the amount I have in this beer right now, which is probably about a third. Like, if I take one more sip out of that, she'd be round like, oh, like a yeah, hawk yeah, putting fine. another one down. And meanwhile, she's probably drinking 1.5 to 2 for every one I drink. Holy I'm 19. Fuck. I'm already like, this is pretty fun. And she's just fine. Yeah. Then brings out, like, the vodka. Is she a sturdy lady? No, she's like a normal, like a, just like a normal sized person right. and like just puts it away. Hell yeah. Smokes, like, and just, I guess it's the Siberian in her, but she's just so blunt. So that was when I was 19 and I got married at some age. Uh, I don't remember <laughs> what age I was. You were, and I got married, maybe 29, 30. You were 2017. 30, I would have been 31. 31. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was 31, so I hadn't seen her for 12-ish years, mm. I reckon, in person. Like, kept up on social media and stuff. And, you know, since then I would discovered comedy and what drinking beer every night could truly do to a man's body. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, the wedding suit I had, I, I was concerned about the size of it when I got it because I was like, my mom's like, oh, but you can, like, you know, exercise and eat healthy in the time. It's pretty tight now. But by the time you get there, and I was like, it's going to be the exact opposite thing. <laughs> Maybe we should go the size yeah. up. But the size we, up. We're going to need to reinforce these buttons. Yeah, yeah. But the size up looked, like, fucking, like, ridiculous. <laughs> like, it was too big yeah. at the time. Kill and Hill at the NBA <laughs> draft yeah, 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 and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Should have gone with that one. Because, like, the whole time, like, you know, the stomach's, like, poking out. And so the first thing, like, she says to me, when after like 12 years, she's like, Jamie, congratulations. And then she pinches her thumb and index finger like at the belly button underneath and she just goes, you have got fat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my Lord. On my wedding day, a cigarette in her mouth. Oh. And I was like, yes, this woman rules. <laughs> I sit feel, on my lap. Uh, I Let feel me bad. Feed you some <laughs> <laughs> No, that's great. So, she, so, so Russian, Siberia, Russian. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So she knows, she knows how. Knows to a way around some fucking. Some I got drive. a um, I got a landmark. This is uh, a landmark in Den Haag. Yeah. Called the I don't know if you've been there. The apparent dead house. 
No, I don't think I have. So this used to be a thing, apparently. Um, but this is like one of the last standing ones that you know that hasn't been demolished since when you know whenever they were popular. Um, it's located in the Kirkhoflan Cemetery. That's built, my name. Oh, b- built in um, doesn't that mean church? Kirk means church. Right. Yes, hell yeah, Jamie Church. And fucking <laughs> hell, <laughs> no gas, and this guy's going off the yes. rails. <laughs> <laughs> and edit point. I <laughs> <laughs> um, need to be more than that, <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's built in 1830, and uh, by a city architect. So it's with, it's within the in, within the graveyard, and it's originally used to basically house the recently dead. Yeah, and it's called the apparent dead house because medicine wasn't advanced enough. So they didn't know if you were actually dead. Oh, I see. So it's like, this, we think this guy's dead. You know, he hasn't fucking opened his eyes. out how to check a pulse yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, they basically, they would, they would move them into the central room and attendants would check them for signs of life for a couple of days after their apparent death. So these guys were professional death watchers, they were called. <laughs> and, uh, and they would place feathers and mirrors in front of the corpse's face to check for breath. Like just to see if they started <laughs> breathing, I'm start tickling them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that rhymes. Yeah, um, but my favorite was one of the th- things they did was um, uh, the bodies would would be attached to an elaborate system of strings and bells so that any movement would be immediately detected. <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> yeah, so they're just rigging them up like a fucking Rube Goldberg machine, or a just Dutch like ten pin bowling alley or something. Yeah. But, but I mean, you know how, like, imagine having a huge bender and waking up in the apparent dead house and they're like, I've got to make some changes. <laughs> yeah, it's like, can I get a glass of water in here? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Oh, man. It oh, is just great to hear about these places because, like, you know, growing up there, leaving at 13 and you're like the dead house. I'm yeah, like, you could have gone to the dead yeah, house. Yeah, but it's just like, oh, the, I know the toy shop where I bought my first Tamagotchi. It's it's been, like, it sounds like it's probably like the same sort of setup. I, you fucking imagine day one it being a death watcher and they're like posting out the front like, it starts to look like an OK Go film clip in there, you know. Give us a <laughs> shout. <laughs> well, yeah, you get in there and it's just the treadmill one instead. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, did you? Oh fuck you! No, I've, I lost my train of thought completely. <laughs> no, I, I did completely not. Completely lost it. Jesus Christ! Come on, James. You've got it. You've mm. got it. OK Go. Do we ever tell the story t- about Tamagotchi? Do we ever? <laughs> do we ever tell the story on here about? I think we did. Do we ever tell the story about here about? About the banana show, that, and we figured out yeah, it was the same yeah, yeah, we did that. Yeah, we did. Damn. Yeah. And that could have eaten up a good 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I got, um, uh, fucking, what did I have? Oh, yeah. I got something about, uh, nearby. This, uh, I only, I only want to do this because I love Drew, Drew loves monkeys. <laughs> but this oh, is Rotter, Rotterdam Zoo, which is uh, Rotterdam, Rotterdam Zoo is great. It's only near, right nearby, right? I yeah. mean, like it's it's not the hey, it's the next city along the corridor. Yeah, Ro- well, Rotterdam's on the water because it's like a famous like docking city. Yeah, yeah, yeah not in like a penis world. to penis. Like, a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just want to clarify, not the more common uh, known. Oh, that, docking. that's what I was going to mention. Den Haag also has like I think like the second major red light district in that area. Because, like, everyone knows that the Amsterdam, Amsterdam one, right. is the one that you go to. But the, the Hague has its own pretty substantial one. Why are the Netherlands so weird, like, sexually? Is there some reason? So weird? You mean well, not free? Weird, free. Yeah, sure. I mean, I mean you're weird. It didn't look good <laughs> no, to me. Sure. I'm so fucking ladies in, like, a big cardboard box. Yeah, cardboard, I have like, a, a glass box. But it's all, like, tourist. Like, a lot of that stuff is all, like, tourist bullshit where it's, like, you know, you bring it up well, and everyone's, But like, also, like, weed cookies and shit. Like, it's pretty liberal yeah. in that Surely regard. it goes back to, like, Yeah, I love having... Surely we could have looked this up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I love, I love so going to Holland and having a terrible time on weed and, like, that's the one time I pretend I'm a good weed smoker and then just fucking... I went there with my wife and good friend of ours, Ben Squires, and, like... Squires he in the Netherlands with you? Uh, he was there just like he was in Germany and he came for right, a day. Cool. And like I didn't ruin his day. But like very early on, we went to a coffee shop and we we're just down there. And you know, like I smoke cigarettes. So I'm like, yeah, there's nothing, you know. And then I'm just fucked. Like immediately walking out of this basement with like a ladder that you had to climb up to get back up. And both my wife and our friend Ben are just like, yeah, it's pretty weak weed. And I'm just like, <laughs> really? Yeah, me too. Can we stop with some water, please? And then Amy like, was cop- it was doing it better than you. Yeah, and I was trying to hide it. I'm. She might listen to this and be like, "Wow," but like I thought it was pretty obvious because like I found like this bar where you could play like arcade games. And we went there, and then like I'm just sitting there, and they're like, "Do you want to play any arcade games?" I'm like, "No, nah, I'm good." 
just have a drink, it's fine, you know, like, and then... Just internally melting down. Yeah, I actually have another good story about weed in Amsterdam uh, that I think I've told you before. Okay. That, but I haven't mentioned on the pod. It's about my mate, uh, my mate Matt. Love him to death. But he is a guy that uh, in high school thought he was cooler than me and my friends, even though he hung mm. out with us. But he was like, I, I'm kind of the social chameleon. Like, I hang out with the cool guys. I hang out with you guys too. Like, right. And he would, like, very often and very patronizingly say to me and my simple friend Davis, like, I know you guys look up to me. And we'd be like, you're tall. <laughs> That's it. Like, oh, yeah. This is a guy I met at the Aurora Hotel that one time. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Love, lovely guy. The nicest guy in the world. But just like at that time had a bit of a chip on his shoulder about how popular he was. And was keen to like <laughs> show how popular he was. He was working in this uh, – he was working in the surf store in Castle Towers. I'm not sure if it still exists, so I won't name it. Um, but – he was working there. So he met all these people and like, you know, like these places, they, they have like a dead shit boss who seems really cool when you're 17, 18. Cause he's like, he's 35 and he's got a million dollars and he owns a place and he gives us beers every weekend yeah, he has a on his weird cam. <laughs> yeah. On his weird compound, his wife's strangely young, you know, like yeah. that sort of stuff. And they're like, I, man, this guy sounds cool. Yeah. He's just one of the guys. And so, uh, he met all these people working there as well. And he was like, yeah, do you mind if I bring down the, the crew from this store? And would be like, yeah, whatever, man. The surf shop in Castle Hill. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Surf's up, man. <laughs> you buy, like, puka shell necklaces. Even that longer. time, like, they're going out of date. But uh, so we went to Europe in 2009, and uh, it was the guys I went with their first jaunt around Europe. And mm, so Love a jaunt. Yeah, so we, we were having a ball. We went to so many great places. We went to a pizza in the off season. So we got there and we're like in a cab, like it's new year's Eve and a beat. So where are we going? The guy's like to Pacha. It's literally the only place open. Oh, man. We went there. Cos- you lined up behind tumbleweeds. Oh like, man. It, it fucking sucked because like, I, I'm not a drug guy, but like, and my friends weren't really at the time, but they were just because like a bottle of thin water. In, like, 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 yeah. Know. But like a bottle of water costs like $14 and a beer costs $28. So they're like, I guess we're going to have to start doing ecstasy. And, uh, but yeah, we went all around and we went to, um, we went to Amsterdam and we're talking about like, Oh, we can smoke some weed, chill out, like check out the red light districts and stuff. And my friend Matt is like, Oh, my friend, uh, Ricky Ricardo, who I know from the <laughs> the, uh, the surf store. This sounds like a Happy Days character. Yeah, 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 yeah. He always hits the jukebox. <laughs> yeah. bring, me the, hey. bring me the horizon. Yeah. Starts playing. Castle Tower. <laughs> hey, General Pensko, what's going on? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, like, yeah, my man Ricky Ricardo, you guys love him. He's so cool. Like, he's kind of like one of my friends. Yeah. From, uh, Just say Ricky. Place. Like, yeah, no one yeah, needs yeah, to know yeah. you. Uh, I think that was his stupid fucking yeah. nickname. I'm looking forward to this holiday. A little R and R. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Is. Let's edit that into the old joke, into yeah. the Kirk Church joke. Maybe let's maybe let's just finish the cut out to the theme music here and just be like it didn't get Working any better. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he's like he's going on about it. He's like Ricky Ricardo. He's like he lives in Europe now, or he's on exchange there for a little bit. He's gonna come party with us at Amsterdam. And man, you guys haven't party till you party with me and Ricky Ricardo, and we're like okay. Fine, <laughs> and so we go to this. We go to this coffee shop. Keep us for that bottle. We go to this coffee shop, and it's it's a pretty famous one. I think. Uh, I mean, people can look it up, but it's one where like there's a cat that's constantly in on the windowsill out the front, so you can see like a cat when you you go in, and it it's right in the middle of Amsterdam, and so we go in, and you know I'm sensible, always have been, mm-hmm. always will be. And I go up and I'm like, hey. Is that cat microchipped? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, has he been new to the space? Uh, so I go up and I'm like, hey, like, uh, can I get some weed? Can I get some marijuana? <laughs> I, I know, I need One duty, like that. please. <laughs> <laughs> do you know when Ricky yeah. Ricardo is going to be yeah. here? Uh, I don't know, do my hair before he yeah. does. I'd like to toke on a marijuana <laughs> cigarette, please. No, I was just like, I just said to them, like, hey, man, I don't smoke much weed. Like, just something that will, like, get me giggly, you know, with mm-hmm. my girls. And, like, my friend Jake was like, yep, same. My simple friend Davis was like, I've heard about it. I'll do the space cake. And they were like, okay, this is the cake. Have a quarter of it max. See how you feel. 
And my mate Matt, who's meeting Ricky Ricardo, bragging about it, looks at the menu and he goes, I love the Purple Haze because he recognizes it as a Jimi Hendrix song. Yes. Thinks it's really cool. It's the strongest one of on course. the menu. So Hendrix used to play guitar with an acid tab yeah, in yeah, his yeah. fucking headband. Yeah. Like I'm yeah. assuming Purple Haze is probably not up to Matt White's standards. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, me and Jake got the Sometimes I Run by Britney Spears. <laughs> 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 so they gave it – and so like uh, – have you been to Amsterdam before? No, no. So that no. when you buy weed, they give you like these little test tubes to keep like the the joint in mm. if you can't roll them yourself, which obviously we could not. Mm. And so I started smoking with Jake and we're like having a great time. Like we're like, and it's packed as well, I should mention. So we've like been shoehorned right to where this windowsill with the cat is, right in like a little corner. The four of us are standing there. There's not much you could do. And also that's the only area that you could smoke cigarettes because – Coffee shops have a weird thing where you can't smoke cigarettes even though you can smoke weed because tobacco is bad for you. Um, just bloody go- big government. I know. Big it's ridiculous. Be- Beatrice and an Argentinian yeah. fucking <laughs> nationalist dis- uh, party. Yeah, National yeah, yeah, Socialist yeah. Party. And so we're uh, having a great old time, like talking. Davis has shoveled in a quarter of a space cake. He's waited like two and a half minutes before deciding that it hasn't worked. So he has the second course, quarter. The yeah. Park. And uh, yeah, that is a rookie error. Matt takes a big old hit of purple haze and goes completely white and just <laughs> just stops talking <laughs> for like 15 minutes. <laughs> it is fucking putting him on a stretcher and taking him through the assumed dead palace. <laughs> yeah, you can see the bartender fitting little bells on it. <laughs> and uh, so he goes like completely white. We don't notice because we're like giggling. We're talking about like Final Fantasy and stuff. Oh, and then like 10 minutes later, like Davis, who's still fine because the space cake still hasn't hit him, was like, this space cake's not very powerful. How are you guys going? We're like, we're pretty high. And we're like, Matt, how are you going? He's like, oh, and like, man. he's got that. You know when you can tell someone's about to vomit because like they're like dribbling a little? Mm. <laughs> he had that. And oh. uh, like, so I turn to my friends and I'm like, I think Matt is going to be sick and I think we need to get him out of here. And they're like, but we've still got all this weed. And then, and like, apparently this Ricky Ricardo guy is coming. So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, Matt, do you need to leave? And he's like, blah, 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 blah. like saying no, essentially. Uh, and but he can't like, string he's a, a big, fucking, big sense. fucking he's boy. a big unit. So I'm yeah, picturing yeah. like, the, the ogre that gets in the bathroom of Hogwarts in the Harry Potter movie. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, 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 kind of. And uh, so, like, you know, like two minutes passes and we're like, now, like, Matt's mood has soured our high into that paranoid you can only get when you've smoked weed where you're like, I think they've noticed, and they've probably called the cops who are going to come raid this place, even though it's completely legal. Yeah. Like this is You're the drag to the fucking ICC. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's only a matter of time before we're like I'm not Argentinian, <laughs> <laughs> and so Matt looks worse for wear, and then just projectile vomits everywhere, oh. like while standing completely still. That's Ugh. a problem with weed is that you're not vomiting up the grog or that like it's in your lungs. Like mm. it's not. I don't know if that actually. Stops you being yeah. high, really, right? Yeah. So we think it gets on the cat, which <laughs> we're not sure if it's a real cat or, a an, ana- cat. or an animatronic cat at this point. <laughs> Wait, is, what do you mean you don't on. know? If it's My argument the cat. that it is animatronic. At this because point, like, you walked in and it, you weren't high. Well, because the, because it's very still. Like, it doesn't move. So it's either like the cat is super stoned because yeah. he's in this fucking place the whole time. He's got a feather in front of this cat. So yeah, he's yeah. dead. <laughs> So Matt projectiles. I don't think the staff had noticed. So there's just like vomit dripping down his chin and like oh, on the they floor. Noticed. And we're like, holy shit. And I'm like immediately like, should we go tell them so we can clean it up for them? And they're like, no, we should just <laughs> leave. And I'm like, are you sure we shouldn't just say something and offer to clean it up? And like Matt and Jay, Matt and I mean, Jake and Dave's like, no, let's just take him home. And uh, so we just, like, drag him out of this place. He's kind of like, he's Frankenstein at this point. We're walking along. He's a big fella. We're kind of pushing him. He's making no sense. Uh, can't, like, check his phone. Can't do anything. Can make out one word. Yeah, yeah. Ricardo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, I'm walking with Jake being like, what the? And you know, you know that feeling you get? It happens when you drink as well. Like, when you get fucking shit-faced, but then someone gets even more shit-faced and you feel sober as a result. Mm. Like, we had that. We were just like, all right, we're back down to zero. Like, we just got to get our friend home to the hostel for the night. 
At this point, the space cake kicks in for old mate Davis. So we've, we're pushing this fucking six foot, 120 kilo man while our wiry, jufroed friend behind us is just like staring at his hands and asking us where he is. So we have to drag him with us as well. And then we get back to our hostel, which I should mention is movie themed. So <laughs> every room in the hostel is themed after a movie. Ours is after the Mike Myers smash hit Austin Powers, oh, which means yeah. that oh. all the walls are purple. Oh, and no. on the no, Delic, purple yeah. haze. <laughs> and then the mural above, directly above Davis's bed, is a full length Mike Myers dresses <laughs> Austin Powers saying, Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, is, that Aust- is that Mike Myers or is that an animatronic <laughs> picture? I'm not too sure. There's so we're like putting Davis to bed, who is like literally talking. To Mike Myers <laughs> and Matt, my friend Matt, who like we've tried to change, and he, but he's got on these stupid like glow in the dark skeleton gloves that he's become enamored with. But he's also oh, become. Man, how did you not tell yeah, us what that the fuck? What? He's also become really. <laughs> is, this, is this a Karate Kid reference or like? I don't know what skeleton it was. glow in the dark gloves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but yeah. no other. And you guys apparel? are like, listen, Matt is a bit cool than us, but <laughs> yeah. uh, I just hate how he keeps yeah, rubbing it in. Yeah. We never said he was. Is he wearing? Wearing like a button up shirt, like he's not dressed like a goth where it would No, no, it's, it's the middle of winter, so we've got like okay. big jackets and shit on. You're like right. it's gloves for, you know, warmth. protection. Yeah, warmth is probably a better way of saying it. <laughs> Prot- <laughs> protection from getting laid. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had a lot of stuff with that on that trip, but. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, he's looking at, but he's also become like weirdly mean. Like he's covered in vomit. We're putting him to bed and he's just like, Jamie. You're fat. <laughs> no, oh my like, god! Just like thanks, Matt. Oh <laughs> he's just god. like, he's just like, he's get along with your auntie. Yeah, and he's just like, Jake, <laughs> believe this fat fuck? Jake, you're balding. <laughs> we're just oh, like, Jesus Christ. Man. So we put him in bed, and we dude, just, you're wearing skeleton gloves. Yeah. <laughs> well, we put him to bed, and we like uh, smoked the rest of the weed we have out the window because, like, when we got to the hostel, the guy was like, "Here are the terms and conditions. You know, like, no smoking unless you've got a window open. You know, like he was trying mm. to be cool. So we just did that, and we woke up the next day, and Matt was like, okay. And we're like, thank God, Matt's okay. And Davis had had like this whole odyssey where it spent the whole night like hallucinating Mike Myers and stuff. <laughs> but we're just like, Matt's okay. And then so we, we like, I would do that stone sober if I'm <laughs> yeah, asleep wait, looking at Mike Myers, <laughs> a poster above my bed. It wasn't, yeah. I as soon as we entered that room, there was one bed that was not looking at him, and you couldn't see him. I was like, that's my bed. Uh, <laughs> Talk about protection from getting laid. Imagine <laughs> yeah, a girl yeah, me, yeah. Oh, go, take you back to the shag pad. You'll get what I mean in a minute. <laughs> well, I stayed in a hostel in Japan once with a girlfriend where, like, the, the theme was Madonna, but it wasn't, like, painted. It was just, like, a bunch of clippings from magazines that a guy had cut out and put and laminated on the wall. So, so it was like, like a, a serial mo- killer? Yeah, 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 but just the, but, well, like a virgin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, so we, uh, we take – we go out to breakfast and – we're like asking how Matt is, like having a laugh at his face, you know. We're just mm-hmm. like, I can't believe you embarrassed us so bad last night. And we're like, oh, well, look, we've got three more days in Amsterdam. We'll go out again tonight. Uh, let's, Matt, how about you message your friend Ricky Ricardo and we'll <laughs> do a rain check. Which is when he goes, oh, yeah, I can't. And it's like, why can't you? And he's like, Ricky was living in England and he flew over here for one night to party with us. Oh, oh no. And he had been calling all night when Matt couldn't answer his phone. Fucking hell. So Matt had to call him in the morning and be like, I got too soon. Do you want to hang out again? And he was like, no, I have to go home. So he'd paid for a flight to Holland to come to Amsterdam to not see any of us hang out by himself and then fly back to England because he had work like the next day. Jesus oh, Ricky got this done. Yeah. But that always- what did you, but from that point, whenever Matt, whenever Matt yeah. was like, I know you guys look up to me. We're like, like Ricky Ricardo? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, did he, man. um? did you find out what Ricky did for that night? I think he had a good night, but like, that's what Matt told me. So right. it could, he could have just been sitting You would have had a better night room. than pushing Matt up a hill, putting him in bed and getting abused. Yeah, I mean, you literally. Ricky Ricardo, you're a loser. <laughs> yeah, literally could have gone to any bar and had a better time than we did that oh, night. Fucking hell. Yeah. Man, I would definitely want to go to Amsterdam. I'd. I do, I do want to tell this Rotterdam Zoo thing though. We got time. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah, we got time. Yeah, okay, he's time. Rotterdam we'll Zoo. Two-hour episode. So Rotterdam Zoo. I just love this because I just I, like I said, Drew loves gorillas and uh, and all monkeys. Or you just a monkey guy. I like monkeys. I like gorillas. Yeah, you're, you're all over any it. of the primates. Baby. Chimpanzees. Rotterdam. Rotterdam had the ones with the big red butts. Baboons. Yes. 
Baby, you better believe. The redder, the better. (laughs) (laughs) I'm big red over here. (laughs) Rotterdam Zoo, I... at some point, 2007-ish, whatever, they had a, a gorilla, silverback or whatever, called Bakito. And a uh, big star attraction was Bakito. And uh, 2000, May 18th of May 2007, Bakito jumped over the water-filled ditch of his enclosure <laughs> and it, this violently attacked a woman. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> dragged her oh, around no. for uh, you know metres, inflicting... Fractures and stuff, and bit her a hundred times. Holy fuck! He subsequently entered a nearby restaurant. Still like gorillas now. Drew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he caused a panic among. He entered a nearby restaurant, a restaurant, causing panic among visitors. <laughs> he just walks into the restaurant, dragging this woman. Uh, eventually, <laughs> uh, he was sedated with a tranquilizer gun. But here's the thing: so they everyone had all this sympathy for this woman, right? But then they they found out later the woman who was attacked, uh-huh. she'd been a regular visitor to the Great Apes enclosure, visiting an average of four times per week for a year and a half. She had a habit of touching the glass that separated from the gorillas, making eye contact with Bakito and smiling at him. And basically the, the zoo had told her, look, you need to stop doing that. What? Because it's like he... he come out and... Take, try to take yes. to dinner. And the, the gorillas are likely to interpret like intense eye contact as a challenge or form of aggressive display. But she had basically said, no, I'm going to keep doing that because he smiles back. And when I smile at him, he smiles back and we have a special bond. Oh, my God. So, uh, so this basically, idiot was in love with the fucking gorilla. So, yeah. so the experts suggested he was... M- he was, she was like, he's smiling at me. The expert said he was more likely just baring his teeth as a threat. Yeah. So for a year and a half, she's going in four days a week, <laughs> tapping on the glass and <laughs> smiling, taunting this fucking yeah. gorilla. So uh, he eventually just goes, fuck this shit. Just leaps, leaps over, over yeah. grabs her, doesn't kill her, just bashes her up a lot. And then, um, <laughs> but, you know, he just, just teaches her, her a lesson. And uh, <laughs> But, but yeah. she, even afterwards, she said... <laughs> teaches her a lesson is... <laughs> I mean, that's a gorilla lesson, yeah. right? Like, it's not... It's a know, lesson of you know, nature. Write a fucking review for it, you know? Yeah. Like, what's Bikito got to do? So, Bikito, he... Um, but she said afterwards, afterwards, Bikito remains her darling, despite suffering this a broken arm a and a, over a hundred bites. I don't even know if gorillas bit you. I yeah. thought they just... So, uh, yeah, so I just thought that was... And that's gonna, quick biting as well. Yeah, a like hundred bites in a couple of seconds. And it actually... Uh, they was a Dutch word of the year in 2017 was Bikito proof, which was uh, the word for a zoo that can contain a <laughs> gorilla of the power of Bikito. <laughs> so right. it became like nobody the, can contain Bikito. Yeah. Huh? So they're like this thing over here, like trying to sell a you. Like, hey, thanks, Bikito proof. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, good miles. The Netherlands rules. I know, man. Fuck, I love it. Uh, what do we got? We got 52 minutes, James. Do we want to get in? Oh, what have I? Oh, the, you talked to the first step about the um. Theme park. The theme park. Yeah, yeah, we should talk about the theme park because it does rule. Like, okay. it's a major theme park in the Netherlands. Yeah, I've got two reviews here. First of all, from Brian Robert Allen. One star. We, Three first names. Yeah, we experienced trust. discrimination in the tiki pool as we were English. Oh, <laughs> come on, Brian. Brian, no one's on board with yeah. this. I have lodged and, a formal and, uh, complaint. And also we, so it was Brian, Robert, <laughs> and <Yeah>, exactly. <laughs> one account. Comma, Robert, it's like a shared Robert. Facebook account. Uh, I'd love to mates. know because the tiki pool is like, yeah, I'd love to know how you get discriminated in that kind of like for being part. English. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, this is in, asking for fucking like this is in the lagers, most, warm lagers. Yeah, 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 exactly. Those are the most international part of fucking Europe, nearly. Like, really, like in terms of like how many English people could come through there. That you know what I mean? Yeah, a lot. It's not like they're real. That the, the park is going to have a policy of fuck the English. It's probably twenty five percent of their clientele. So I I don't understand what this idiot's fucking on about, but. Uh, one star from Brian, comma, Robert, comma, Alan. Uh, and then Amir, one star. This place is just a money-making machine. It's like, yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fucking amusement park. What, what do you what think, do you think Disneyland? Yeah, what do you really <laughs> think it is? Hold on, you're charging me money to ride on that roller coaster. What about my human rights? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so Dune, Dune Rail, and it's a big – is it like – it's like one – like it's is it, the, is it the nationally a massive thing or just regionally? I would say nationally, I yeah. think. Like it's I think it's nationally the biggest I mean, I'll probably be wrong about this, but I think it is the nationally biggest theme park in home. Like right. it is You don't associate a lot of Europe with theme parks, really. Like well, you're a Disney. 
Okay, yeah. I stand but corrected. <laughs> <laughs> but that's more like Disney. Oh, man. Yeah. Really, you know, but I'm, I mean, I'm about huge. to leap over this table like Bikito. <laughs> <laughs> Tricky's baring his teeth. Uh, no, nah, well, like, it, it's cool because, like, it's uh, open seasonally. So, like, the theme park theme park is only open, I think, during summer. Because, obviously, like, Holland, not the greatest weather like it rains a lot during winter mm. and stuff but the tiki bar which is a water park within the theme park is open all year and the tiki bar is like a full like size like wet and wild style water park confined in like one building right. like it has Fuck. hectic slides we talked about in the first episode there was one that like drags you underwater for an extended amount of time that someone <laughs> drowned in yeah, but it's like, horrific but like it's also like popularized like uh, the 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 slides where like you'd go into like a like a cone and you drop out the bottom like yeah. th- those are really cool and like the theme park itself was pretty big and like had uh, you know like roller coasters it was called the frog co- coaster because the frog was the mascot of down rail uh, and it had like one of those like a water flume ride and one of those big spinny fuckers you know that. <laughs> It's kind of like a pirate ship. It takes you upside down, but like at rapid speed. Yeah, I know the yeah, ones. Yeah, right. Like so the, the ones that people always vomit on. And yes, on it was, there are a few of those kind of things. But there was also some cool stuff. There was a shadow room where like you could go and like all the walls were kind of like uh, like big white walls. And like every 10 or so seconds, like a camera would click off and whatever pose you would in it would yeah, do the shadow I've so you better that. believe there is a lot of butt fucking yeah <laughs> jerking off so yeah, yeah. yeah man it's a, it's a universal language that even when you're like nine years old it's like what if i made it look like we're coming on your <laughs> 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 you know like well and you only live down the road or something didn't you? yeah so i had like a essentially like a year pass where i could just like you pay a certain amount of money and you go whenever you want so like if you know it's a saturday and you're like you want to go do something it's like we could fucking you know go to the tiki bar well yeah yeah we could force our parents to drive us like 30 and minutes James to go when he was born in england <laughs> yeah. <laughs> stay away from there's a lot of discrimination bar. when i kept singing footballs coming home there. <laughs> but like you know you could tell your parents to drive you to a movie which would be like a 30 minute drive and then pay or you i could walk 10 minutes down the street and go to a theme park like that that's does a, rule that's pretty crazy. which was pretty good and then like i mean and the thought like in australia the theme parks are basically the gold coast and it's on a fucking highway. Nobody's walking there. No. Like the, the idea that you could walk to a thing. No, this was on my so street, far. man. Yeah, that's like, crazy. This is like the address of it is the same street I lived on. <laughs> so so I was on 139, <laughs> and I think this was like somewhere in the 300s. That's Some guy pulls up a massive roller coaster, you knocks on your door. He's like, oh, I got a uh, delivery here for a do- Oh, hold on. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Next house over, actually. Guy, guy just in a frog hat being like, are you English? <laughs> like, <laughs> in the face. But like, I, I mean, a bit further was the beach. So like, you could also go to the beach in Vastanat. Like, Vosna had its own beach, and it's uh, the only reason I didn't go as much. And you'll laugh is because there was a big hill on the walk there. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really like. And you'll laugh. And I didn't like. I didn't like the big hill very you much. But at the top hill. of the big hill, there was a there was a vendor that served like fries in a cone, which is a very Dutch oh, specialty yeah, covered in shit. mayonnaise. So you're looking up at that hill and you're like, if I can just get up to the top of that hill. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember like be- having like a bike because everyone bikes in Holland. And, like it's got some of the safest bike paths in the world. Like mm. they have more rights than car users. Essentially, I remember biking and like throwing tantrums while my parents were like. I think of the fries. <laughs> so even they, they knew how to speak to me from a young age. Just come you know? zooming yeah, past. Yeah. Think of the fries, Jamie. <laughs> Jamie's just got a fishing rod above his but fucking they, bike with fries and chips on the end. I mean, I remember the beaches there being pretty cool. Like, obviously, it wouldn't get the same kind of, like, waves, like, a Bondi got yeah, or anything. Yeah, yeah. But, like, all of the... Like, along the beach, there would be, like, a bunch of, like, huts erected that would be restaurants, essentially. Mm. And also, like, one of the first times I realized that, like, Dutch people charge you to use public toilets because they just keep, like, bottles full of coins. And one time I found, like, I found some coins on the floor earlier. And uh, I then I went to the toilet and a guy took my dollar coin from me that I'd found and I cried. In the <laughs> <laughs> oh. Man, you want to be – that's a – it better be a huge shit if you got to pay a dollar for it. You know I was just mean? piercing. Oh, oh no. no that's I literally brutal. put it on the like top of the urinal and the guy came and wordlessly took it from me and I was like, what is just this? Just fucking oh. weigh it out to waist length, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, waist deep in the ocean, But yeah, let it go. I mean like in terms of like stuff you could do, like there's a lot. And then like Den Haag is pretty easy to get to by 
car and then next to Den Haag is Scheveningen which was like the other big beach suburb which had like your movie cinema as well but like also like a very well known beach there and for adults like a big Russian bath scene if you want to live out like Eastern Promises Ooh. which Ooh, I think we all do yeah, yeah. yeah Russian bath so you mean like the sauna well stuff. because I know that because of my my auntie Ilsa oh, who was yeah. like you, we'd go to Shaving she was in the Russian, Russian bath, bath. So I was like oh, fuck yeah we do like I was almost going to extend my trip just to do that but yeah, we need to get her on I mean yeah oh <laughs> man she'd be a blast Side to have her on. with Ilsa yeah, yeah. She'd, um, be a, she'd be a lot of fun now we normally ask guests three questions to uh, wrap wrap up proceedings you mean two questions yeah two questions is it oh Fuck <laughs> hell. <laughs> Drew, Drew, every episode Drew's zoned out. <laughs> Drew's messaging Hannah being like, how long have the veggies got left in the oven? Uh, no, no, the third, no, yeah, the third question is I always text the guest afterwards. Are you mad at me? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Two, what, first question you is know. three parts. And yeah. so we're going to do morning, afternoon, and night. Yeah. And, and I, I guess mean, you got to say. Get Ilsa involved somehow. Yeah, get yeah, her involved somehow. But well, she lives in Belgium now, so I guess I'd have to take text her in advance and be like, "You want to drive down for a day?" Um, yeah, it's interesting. Morning, I thought about this because obviously, when you're younger than thirteen, you leave. You don't really care about cafe culture or coffee or any of that bullshit. So I, always, I just still think that like Vosna doesn't have much of a cafe cult. Like I know there's one cafe that you go to, but. There's probably like tons of places now that kind of like we take coffee seriously, but in the morning I just say you just have breakfast at home, man. It's a nice town. Dutch people are obsessed with fucking eating chocolate sprinkles uh, on toast. Like that's a big yeah. That's, what's that called or something? It's, right. it's a long. It's called, it's called chocolate haselslag, oh, yeah, it, yeah. but it's literally sprinkles on toast, and it's disgusting. I hate sprinkles, but uh, <laughs> you'd think that I don't, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I'm, I'm with a you. Man sprinkles of many suck. sides. You reckon? Yeah. Sprinkles are awful. Sprinkle. I don't Chocolate even know what you're talking about. It's like fairy bread stinks. No, like fairy, I, oh, well, hang on. I'll stop you there. Fairy bread rocks. No, it's bad. Hold uh, on. So you like chocolate, but you don't like its sprinkle form. Correct. But but how could it ruin it for the, you? I agree. Like I'm I'm this on your side. Yeah. The, I think some Spring, of the texture too, of the yeah, sprinkles. It's gritty so and crunchy. Yeah, yeah you don't. You, it's not smooth enough, oh, baby. Man, you guys are anyway, weird. I'd probably go down in the morning. I'd probably go down to the Lungstrat, which is the like the shopping, the main shopping drag. It's completely different from when I went. I would in 1999. I would have gone down to the Free Record Shop, which is where you go and buy CDs. They used to one uh, one thing in Holland. I'm not sure if it ever made it here. Was when the Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee sex tape broke. They yeah, found yeah. a way to we monet- heard about that. Yeah, yeah, but they found a way to monetize it by making it like a shitty video game. And that spent like what? M- what? That, that spent a like video game. That spent like weeks at the top of the charts in Holland. Like because you know it's like Sanity. You know how Sanity used to have like one, two, three, and it would have all this stuff. They had that for like CDs and video games. And one of them was the Pamela Lee. And Tommy Lee video Ooh. game where like you'd solve Fuck rudimentary Tetris like puzzles and then be granted like a thirty second clip of Tommy Lee getting his dick sucked. So you're oh, playing the man. Nintendo sixty four grabbing the middle fucking prong. <laughs> like, I guess <laughs> this is Tommy Lee. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, I would have walked down there and they would have gone to the local books and things and read all the magazines while they asked me if I was gonna buy anything and I said <laughs> maybe next time. What were you reading? PlayStation magazine? Uh yeah, PlayStation Power, a great English magazine. <laughs> great that you can still probably How do I defeat Tommy Lee's cum? <laughs> <laughs> I'm up to level four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'd I'd spend my morning there because there's also some like great Dutch chocolate shops you can go to. And buy stuff. And if you're there during Christmas, you can get a Dutch, a very great Dutch treat called Oliebollen, which is essentially like a donut, but it's like fried and crisp on the. It's just a ball. It's like a fried crisp dough ball, and it's del- and then covered in powdered sugar. You yeah. can do that in the morning, and then I reckon oh. uh, fucking head down to check the weather. Head down to Downrail or the beach, depending on how you're feeling. I reckon. Because you can spend a day at Downrail pretty easily, going mm. amongst the theme park, and then get into the water park. Fucking. Yell at some English cunts. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. And water parks are pretty uh, sick. And then at, at night you could go to my favorite restaurant in Vasana, which is called Het Schautje, which is uh, just a place where you get like a big slab of stone on a burner. And they bring out like a bunch of meat and sauce, and you grill Cook it yourself. It yourself. Yeah. yeah, so it's like Korean barbecue. It's like Korean barbecue, but it's not got like any of the fancy Asian trappings. So it's just like this is a fuck off steak. Like, and right. you do it on the stove. There's no flames at yeah, your table. Yeah, it's just right? a big hot stone. I've done that right. in 
I think I did it in New Zealand or yeah. something. They just and it comes with, like, them. all the trimmers, and it comes with, like, amazing, like, sauces and stuff. Yum. And it's brilliant. I went back there in 2020, raved about it to my wife, and she's like, it's just cooking stuff on the stone. But then she came out a convert, so... Oh, okay. Who is right for marrying me? <laughs> <laughs> you me. wanted a stone, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that, you, that's I, what I was talking about. Yeah. I gotta get you. You marry me, I got the biggest stone. <laughs> I, give, I give you the real rock. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, she's very lucky. Um, <laughs> and then you could go to my old house, knock on the door, and be like, "Jamie Kirk used to live here. You listen to Community Notice Board." And they'll be like, "What the fuck is that?" And then <laughs> <laughs> please leave. Yeah. <laughs> then you could go back and stay in your hotel, probably in the Hague or um, in the Amsterdam. fucking prison of. The I don't Hague. know. I don't even know. Oh no, there is a hotel in Boston. It's called uh, the By Horst. I'm sure it might still exist, but that's where I stayed when I first moved there. And they do good scrambled egg from what I remember. <laughs> there we go. And good scrambled <laughs> eggs from what a man remembers <laughs> from 15 years ago. Well, that, yeah, it would have been when I moved as well. So it would have been the absolute youngest point. I wouldn't have stayed there for any other reason. But do you reckon, like, because Netherlands so small, if you go to, like, The Hague or whatever, you can just piss up to fucking Amsterdam. Like, it's all, I mean, not small, but that area. Absolutely. Was, yeah. Oh, and I'll give a special shout-out to a place in The Hague, the Fiddler and Firkin, which is an Irish bar that plays Premier League games. Sick. Nice. Yeah. I love so it. I spent a lot bar. of time there. Dragged Amy there as well on my honeymoon. Made her watch me watch Liverpool while eating an English breakfast at 9 o'clock at night. Yeah, and she yeah. enjoyed that. Ah. Uh, Probably less than the Stone Girl plays. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got. Well, what's the last question? Come well, on, last Drew, you're question. on. You're on. You're on. And I don't think I here. might suspect the answer to this, but uh, community notice board. We're rocketing to the top of the Australian stand-up comedy podcast chart. Oh, no, Are we more popular first. than Big Natural Talent? <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby. No, but we we're, mul- right <laughs> we're right behind <laughs> us. Uh, we have multiple of our fans playing yeah. futsal with us. <laughs> <laughs> Did Conchetta mention us in our story? <laughs> uh, your comedy career is... Over. Over. <laughs> it's done. You're, Thank you're, God. you're happier than ever. really happy about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Thank God. Uh, you've reached the heights of everything you want to achieve. I'm at the golden barley. When all said and done, would you move back to Varsana? I think about it every day, and I will end up there. Wow. Wow, that's a real stab in the fucking guts. Yeah. We know how well it works on Zoom now. (laughs) Yeah, I cannot (laughs) wait for that. (laughs) Jamie's going to end up there in the apparent dead room or not. I feel like that's going to be... I got got Amy scrolling for jobs there every day. Wow, he's going back. And I can be a beautiful kept boy in Vasana. Yeah, well, what's the... The property prices of those McQueen mansions that yeah. you are in Vasana these days. Would you believe it's much cheaper than Sydney? Really? <laughs> yeah. God damn it. We'll, oh, well. We'll, we'll switch to a full time Zoom pod and then anyone listening will have to go in the apparent dead room. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> certainly not chuckling. <laughs> all right. Well, think of all the Dutch comedians we could get. Ooh. Yeah. Van Is Dutch comedians? I don't actually know. The guy who did <laughs> the fuck the Macarena song? Yeah. Like a guy who farts on cue. That's yeah. Dark. I do actually, know that's that pretty funny. <laughs> he'd be on the, Amst- be on the project. Amsterdam has a fairly active improv scene because UCB has some like sister city link there where they send like their performers down there to perform for like a year as part of a course. So like, oh, wow. so, like I think like, Amsterdam. well, I think like a lot of famous people have spent like a year performing. Yeah. We're the second improv tier there. improv. <laughs> Wow! Well, all all right. right, we're gonna wrap it gonna wrap up and head up. to the barley. So pleasure. if you're listening, come down to the barley and yeah. have a beer. Jake, come have a beer with us. <laughs> come on, brother. <laughs> but yeah, listen and review and everything that we normally ask you to fucking do. Subscribe uh, on YouTube. Subscribe. Um, um, we, we got a nice ever, review today. That that was very. We did nice. from Bonnie eighty yes, seven. Thank, thank you very you, much, Bonnie. Bonnie. If you ever see us put up a call about wanting needing numbers for foot salt, please we're come actually down. Serious. We do. Some we do. We do need it, and we are not bad. It's I getting reckon. good. It's pretty fun. It's hectic. Yeah. My hip feels like it's going to explode. Yeah, my legs now. my legs getting better. I reckon Monday I'm going to be missing shots like old times. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, fun. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Gotcha.